Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. In this sketch, we'll introduce you to the study of cardiac electrophysiology, which, as you can guess by its name, deals with the electrical activity of the heart. The heart is an electrically wired system where electrical impulses lead to muscular contraction. The conduction system carries out a well-orchestrated sequence of events to ensure that the heart builds up enough force to pump blood through the body. So, where better to set our scene than at Sketchy's own Symphony Orchestra? Ooh, I'm getting goosebumps. Cardiac conduction occurs in two types of muscle, contractile and conducting. Contractile muscle, represented by these accordion players, includes myocytes in the atrium ventricles. Notice our curiously heart-shaped stage here has both an atrial and ventricular chamber. Electrical impulses in contractile tissue help to build up a forceful muscular contraction to eject blood from the atrium ventricles. Conducting heart cells aren't much for generating force, but they are the masters behind proper cardiac conduction. The conducting tissue includes the sinoatrial, or SA node, represented by our seasoned maestro here, the atrial internodal tracts, the atrioventricular, or AV node, represented by our maestro's apprentice on the second platform here, and the bundle of Hiss and Purkinje fibers, represented by the string section here. Conducting tissue works to spread electrical impulses, or action potentials, throughout the heart. And it all starts with the SA node, which can spontaneously generate action potentials. Hence our maestro is producing these electrically charged SA-shaped notes here. Normally, electrical impulses from the SA node are sent to the AV node, which, in turn, sends the signal downstream. Hence why we've also included these electrically charged AV nodes. Now, under normal circumstances, the other conducting cells can't fire off spontaneously. But, if the seasoned maestro is out of commission, his apprentice here can fill in for him with his own AV notes. Now that we've met our players, we can learn about the route by which a traveling action potential is conducted through the heart. Let's electrify our scene by tracing out the specific sequence and direction of the cardiac action potential as follows. It all starts at the SA node, the dominant pacemaker which conducts the action potential to the atrial internodal tracts and atria where depolarization and atrial contraction occur. Simultaneously, the SA node sends the action potential to the AV node. Next, the action potential slowly moves to the bundle of Hiss, right and left bundle branches, and Purkinje fibers until it winds up at its final destination, the ventricular myocytes, where electrical impulses lead to a concerted effort to build up a powerful contraction. Our electrified stage is starting to look pretty familiar, don't you think? Much like our maestro here masterfully conducts his orchestra, the SA node masterfully sets the stage for normal cardiac electrical activity with every action potential it fires. Which brings us to a very important concept, normal sinus rhythm, or NSR. NSR, represented by our maestro's metronome here, is the normal, regular timing and pattern of the healthy heart. A heart is said to be in normal sinus when it's beating somewhere between 60 to 100 beats per minute, hence why our metronome here is ticking right on time between the 60 and 100 markings. In sum, normal sinus rhythm requires the following three conditions. 1. The action potential must arise from the SA node. 2. The heart rate is between 60 to 100 beats per minute. And 3. There is a proper sequence and timing of electrical firing including properly timed delays. More on this in a moment. When it comes to conduction in the heart, properly timed events happen because of the relative speeds by which the action potential travels through the different stops in its route. This traveling speed is known as conduction velocity, which differs in different parts of the myocardium. The AV node is the slowest to conduct the action potential, hence why our maestro's apprentice here has slowed way down. It's no accident our AV conductor is taking his time to carefully gather up these papers. This accordion player needs time to fully stretch the bellows before the next time compression. 
Similarly, the AV node is relatively delayed in order to give the ventricles enough time to fill completely before the next contraction. But someone's got to pick up the speed here, so our string section is ramping things up to the max. Likewise, the his perkinji system rapidly spreads the action potential to the ventricles. We're talking somewhere around 2 to 4 meters per second. This maximal conduction velocity causes ventricular cells to excite quickly, contract strongly, and eject blood with great force and power. When these parts work together properly, the action potential will travel from the SA node to the ventricles in just 220 milliseconds. Cardiac conduction velocity reflects the rate of depolarization that is, the upstroke of the action potential, when there is a net movement of positive charge into the cell, aka inward current. To help illustrate this concept, take a look at our string instrument here, where you'll see that the player is clearly striking the bow in the upgoing direction. Simply put, the more ions you have moving into the cell, the faster the depolarization and the quicker the action potential spreads. Conduction velocity also depends on the cable properties of the myocardial tissue, that is, the passive properties which influence conduction, such as cellular connections. One such cellular connection is the gap junction, aptly represented by these numerous holes which allow more air to move through this instrument with minimal resistance. Similarly, when it comes to myocardial tissue, the more gap junctions there are, the lower the resistance to electrical flow, and the faster the conduction velocity. And that does it for our introduction to cardiac electrophysiology. But we're just getting started. We've composed a whole collection of electrifying sketches for you. Will there be a hearty dose of puns? Yes, yes there will. <laughs>